Hello everyone, I'm here to teach you BIOS Mesofauna, all three versions of it. I'm going to start with the Cocoon game, which is the intermediate game, and then talk about the differences between that and Caterpillar, which is the entry-level game that you can play with children, families, casual gamers. And then I'll discuss the Butterfly game, which is the full game with all the bells and whistles. So the first thing we're going to do is find out who goes first. So that is determined by the skeletal number, and we have five, four, and six, so purple's gonna go first, and they're gonna pick two cratons, and these cratons are double-sided. Uh, so I'll put this here, and I'll put that there, and then I'm gonna choose uh, from my species card. So these are all of your species that you could create. You start with your archetype species, and I'm gonna put one of my archetypes in a herbivore biome, here so these cratons are separated into swamps weeds and lakes only swimmers can go in lakes uh, only, uh, everyone but swimmers can go in weeds and anyone can go in swamps so uh, biome is separated into the herbivore side and the carnivore side you have to start in the herbivore side um, and then you may eventually become a carnivore. So that is my turn. Now the opponent is going to do the same. They're going to grab two hexes. And they're going to put it, let's say, there and there. And they're going to put their archetype, let's say, right there. And that's it. That is our world. So our Pangea has been created and in the cocoon game it will never change so um, in the game we can go through a number of actions you can mutate promote speciate or populate mutate is essentially grabbing cards from this market and adding it to your species so let's look at the market right here you notice that it's separated uh, to zero two four six and eight that's the limit that you have um, and that is dependent on your unborn creeples. So if we go to my species card here, you'll notice that I have nine creeples. That means that I can grab anything from any row because the highest row is eight. But if I only had two unborn creeples, I would only be able to grab from the zero or the two spot. I don't have to pay anything. That's just my limit. So let's say that I grab, I want a mantle cavity right here. So I'll grab this and I put it to the left of my species card and I'm gonna add a blue cube on there, a reproductive organ. So that uh, will allow me to create an organ that makes lets me populate faster. Uh, so there are five different types of uh, cube colors. Um, yellow is going to help you in flower hexes uh, during contests. Red is going to help you during carnivore contests. Blue is going to help you populate more. Green is going to help you in herbivore contests. And white in the cocoon game is going to act as a wild um, during any of these contests. So we've discussed mutate um, and how you add uh, derived organs which are these uh, cubes uh, that now we can discuss promote so when you promote you're going to take whatever cube is on this card and you're going to put it as a basal organ so it's no longer a derived organ it becomes a base part of the species and then you're going to flip this and you're going to choose which orientation you want so you'll notice here that there are two different orientations and this tells you what's going to be on the other side. So this is either a yellow tail or a green tail and it's going to give me either another green cube or I can speciate this into a armored species. So I'm going to flip this over and decide if I want to make this part of this species. I just update portrait there and now I have a tail and I grab a green cube and I put it there like so. Uh, instead, I can choose that I want to move it on this side and instead have a yellow tail. And I put this back and now I have a yellow tail instead. 
Um, alternatively, I can choose to speciate. So I can speciate if it has a white silhouette like this and create a new species uh, from its mother. So in this case, I would take the armored species right here and I would put it down there and I would update that and now that is a new species. So when you speciate, you're going to create a new species and you're going to choose, you're going to inherit any of the organs from its mother. So this green goes here and then uh, the baby species is going to get a green and a blue cube as well. Then you're going to place a creeple where its mother is and it's going to actually replace its mother. So in this case, you don't want to do it if you only have one archetype out because then if all of the creeples of any species is gone from the map, that species goes extinct. And archetypes in particular never come back when they go extinct. The other species can come back. But in this case, you probably want to populate first. So let's say that we had another archetype there. And then when you put this out, this is going to replace that. And then this, uh, the mother dies, it goes back to your unborn, and you now have two species. So that is a speciate. Um, after that, we have populate, which I already mentioned. So populate allows you to put more creeples on the map, and that is determined by the number of blue cubes that you have. So if you have no blue cubes, you can always populate one creeple. And if you have uh, blue cubes, you can disperse equal to the number of blue cubes that you have. So it's always one plus the number of blue cubes. So if you have three blue cubes, that means you can pop out four creeples on the map, all right? So how does that work? So you're going to choose its mother and then you're going to move equal to your dispersal points. So in this case, I only have one blue cube. So my dispersal points are two, uh, one plus the number of blue cubes that I have. Now I choose its mother, which is going to be this right here. And now I can move one, two. If I wanted to, I can move one, two. And then I can daisy chain. So if I had uh, another archetype, I could start from here and move one, two. I can't go here because I can't end up in water. I can't end up in a lake. Um, I could cross the lake, but that only leads me to another lake. So I'm, I'm a little limited in where I can go here. All right, so that is uh, dispersal. Um, if during dispersal, uh, you end up in a contest with somebody, let's say that I ended up here, you're going to have to do an herbivore contest. So right now, in this case, I would have to figure out who's going to win this herbivore contest. And this is determined by who has the most green cubes in this hex right here. So I can say, okay, I have one green cube and uh, blue has no green cubes, so I win this contest. So blue is going to lose this contest. Now they are going to determine if they can become a carnivore. So they're going to go up to this space right here. And if they can eat the other species in this biome, then they can successfully become a carnivore. In this case, archetypes can always be eaten. Uh, so they can eat this car they can eat this archetype so they're fine uh, normally you would have to be the same shape so in this case I can eat myself because um, any anything can eat an archetype but if it was like this this archetype could not eat this burrower because it is not the same shape and it is not an archetype all right, so that is how 
those contests work. Um, there is an exception with parasites, but uh, well, let's go over that now. So um, all of the different species work the same except for parasites. Parasites are unique in that if you speciate into a parasite, you don't have to go into the same hex as the mother and then kill off the mother. <coughs> Instead, you can only speciate a parasite if there is a viable host in the same hex. So in this case, there is a viable host in this hex. There's this one right here. A parasite can eat anything of any shape, um, but it can only eat something of the same color. So once you pick a host, you can only eat that color anywhere on the map. So in this case, I'm going to put this parasite there. It is now parasited. And you can see right there. And now, anytime that I want to populate with my parasites, I have to choose a blue creeple to parasite on. Another side effect of this is that the blue creeple is now edible by anyone. Um, so if any shape is parasited, it can be eaten by anything. Uh, the shape restriction no longer applies. All right, so I'm going to discuss a little more about um, herbivore contests and exactly how that works. Um, so in this case, uh, I mentioned that you have to worry about green cubes, but I didn't mention that there's also an issue of editability. Um, who can get eaten? So in this case, let's say that we don't have this right here. Um, we have this here and we have this like so, all right? So in this case, there is an herbivore contest between purple and blue. Uh, I, as I said before, you would count the green cube, but before you do that, you have to check to see which one of these is edible, right? So in this case, this species is edible this burrower is not, which means that the burrower would automatically win that contest because it cannot get eaten by the predators in this biome. So this would go away and this would stick around. Now, we have a problem here in that this carnivore now cannot eat this uh, armored species because it is not the same shape and it is not an archetype. That means that this now also dies because it can't eat the new species that is on that hex. So that goes away as well. So there's a lot of things that can happen when you insert a new herbivore into a biome, killing off perhaps all other life in that biome. Um, so if there is a tie, if, you, if neither are edible, um, and they each have the same number of green cubes, then the uh, defender wins ties. So if you were already in this biome and somebody tries to go into your biome and you're tied, they're going to die. All right. So that is herbivore contests. Carnivore contests work the same way, except it's red cubes uh, instead of green cubes. So if you have the most red cubes, uh, you're going to win carnivore contests. Um, and if uh, you're tied for red cubes, then it's defender wins ties. Um, the other type of contest that happens is parasite contests. So let's say that we have a parasite here like so, and we have another parasite. Let's say a pink parasite decides to come in here. And they want to eat on this herbivore as well. Well, in that case, there's going to be a contest between this purple parasite and this pink parasite. And in that case, 
blue cubes matter. Whoever has the most blue cubes is going to win that parasite contest. So to recap, herbivore contest is green cubes, but you have to make sure that you're not edible or you lose before that happens. Um, carnivore contest is red cubes and parasite contest is blue cubes. So those are the different types of contests. Now, there's something that can happen if you win an herbivore contest. Uh, essentially, you can decide that this is no longer a weed hex, a green hex. It is instead now a flower hex. And in flower hexes, yellow cubes matter instead of green cubes. So if, if you put a flower hex down, that means that if an herbivore contest happens here, now whoever has the most yellow cubes will win that contest. Uh, this also happens if you go into a biome and you are the only species there. If you go into a biome and you are alone, you can decide to turn this biome into a flower hex. And again, now during herbivore contests, it's the number of yellow cubes, whoever is the best pollinator. So green is whoever can digest weeds, yellow is whoever can uh, pollinate the flowers, red is whoever is the best carnivore. So that is what happens when you uh, move into a hex and when you win herbivore contests. Um, now we can move on to uh, the differences between this game and Caterpillar. Um, the differences between this game and Caterpillar are you only have a uh, promoted side. So I mentioned here that you have to flip the cards in order to create the different segments. In Caterpillar, everything starts with its promoted side. So you never... There is no uh, mutate action. There's really just you're grabbing the card immediately and putting it into your portrait. Now, uh, in both games, uh, you have to make sure that when you add to your portrait, the pheromones, which are these color symbols here, that they match. So these symbols, uh, if we look up here, um, I would need to have this right here, this head would allow me to update this portrait. Let's see if I can get this to work here. Ah, uh, that would be why. It's because I grabbed too many things. Um, but this would allow me to put this here like so. And now I've created a little bug with a head and a tail. And this pheromone, um, is what allowed me to do it. I cannot actually add to my portrait if this, if the pheromone colors do not match. Now, if I wanted to add a thorax in between these two, I could, but it would have to match as well, which means it would have to be yellow on one side and yellow on the other side. So for example, none of these would actually work because none of them have a yellow front and a yellow back. Um, But that is uh, how portraits work. And uh, once you've created a portrait where you have a head, a thorax, and a abdomen, uh, you've created a eusocial species, which I'll discuss uh, further in a second. So the other change uh, between this and the Caterpillar game is that there is no shape restriction. What I mentioned previously about only being able to eat things of the same shape uh, and only if it's parasited does not apply in the Caterpillar game. Um, another thing that you don't have to worry about is parasites. Parasites work like any other uh, species. Um, they do not actually parasite other creeples in the caterpillar game. They just act as another species that can be an herbivore or carnivore. All right. So in both of these versions of the game, uh, you play to a certain number of points. So in the cocoon game, 
you're going to play to 16 points. Whoever gets 16 points, the, the fastest wins. Uh, in the uh, Caterpillar game, whoever uh, gets to 12 points first is uh, going to win the game. So how do you get points? Well, points are determined by the number of creeples that you have out. So in this case, I can see that I have three archetypes out and one armored species out. So that's four creeples and the number of your pheromones. So in this case, I have five points, four creeples and one pheromone. And that uh, is tallied uh, at the end of your turn. So I would uh, note that I have five points. That's clearly not enough to win the game. So we continue. As soon as somebody has 16 points at the end of their turn, the game is over and you win. Or in the cocoon game, uh, whoever has uh, 12 points at the end of their turn wins that game. All right, so uh, now um, I'm going to discuss the differences between this and the butterfly game. So the butterfly game has all the bells and whistles, and we'll start with um, contests. So with the butterfly game, contests have a few more tiebreakers. Um, the carnivore contest is going to uh, be first the number of red cubes that you have and then the number of yellow cubes that you have and then the skeletal number which is listed there i have a skeletal number of six uh, and that'll determine who wins any contest so you first find out who has the most red cubes if you're tied who has the most yellow cubes if you're tied which who has the higher skeletal number in carnivore contests in herbivore contest it depends on if it's a flower hex or a, a weed hex like normal and then whoever has the lower skeletal number counts and if you want to know how this works it's all listed here carnivore contests on the left herbivore contests on the right so uh, another difference uh, in the butterfly game is emergency dispersal so there may be white cubes in your uh, display. So in this case, uh, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to put it in my species there. And that's going to give me a blue cube. And then let's say that I promote that. So that's going to become a basal organ. And I flip this over and I decide that this is going to be the side that I put it on, and now I have a white cube. So I'm going to grab a white cube and I'm going to put it down. So what does a white cube mean? Well, a white cube in the cocoon and caterpillar game is just a wild cube color that counts during contests. So if you're doing a carnivore contest, the white cube can count as a red cube. If you're doing an herbivore contest, it can count as a yellow cube or a green cube, whatever you want it to be during a contest. In the butterfly game, a white cube means that you are now a hollow metabolin species. And that means that you are able to do emergency dispersal. So instead of just straight up dying during contests, you could instead decide that you want to do an emergency dispersal. And how would that work? Well, uh, you decide at the start of the game what ticket setting you want, and that'll determine how many dice you roll. So if you want a very uh, low luck game, you can roll um, four dice. Uh, if you want a very uh, high variance game, you roll one die. Um, but this is this is determined for mutagen events. For for hollow metabolin, you only roll one die. So you're going to roll one die. Um, if you are a flyer and you have a white cube, you roll two dice. But in this case, this is the archetype species, so you roll one die and you decide right there. So in this case, you roll the one. You're going to see if any of these hexes is a one and it is this hex right here is a one that means that you can 
parachute into this hex, and if there's a space for you to land on, you uh, are able to emergency disperse from the contest that you just lost. If there is somebody already there, guess what? You do another contest, and if you lose that one, then you have a problem. Um, but in this case, uh, I was able to land here, no problem, and that is a benefit of having white cubes that you can do emergency dispersals. If let's say you do a populate action and you don't have a place to put all of your creeples there, um, you would be able to do an emergency dispersal to go to other hexes. Note this is only in the butterfly game. All right. So what else is possible in the butterfly game? Well, in the butterfly game, we also have events and events are going to change the world drastically. So if you note here, we have these bottom hexes or these uh, bottom icons that have different symbols on them. And I'll go over what all of those symbols mean. So uh, the symbols that have a hex with a number on them, this is going to determine continental drift. So if you see a number, you're going to check to see if that number is on the map. So seven is not on the map, so that one doesn't count for anything. This one is a four, however. So if the four is here, you're going to do a continental shift. And uh, how that works is that you're going to see uh, if the fault, so let's, uh, let's go here. This fault right here, you're going to check to see if that fault is sutured or unsutured. If it is unsutured, meaning if it's connected or not connected. If this is not connected to anything, then it needs to crash into something. All right. So you're going to take this hex and then you're going to see if any other hex is connected to it by a mountain range. Right. So there is nothing connected to this by a mountain range. It is connected, but is these two cratons uh, are not connected by a mountain range. So it doesn't go with it. Right. So in this case, this is just going to travel by itself and it's going to see where it can connect to to create the longest mountain range. Right. So uh, it could connect here. It could connect here, but that's only going to create a mountain range of one. It could connect here, uh, but that's going to create a mountain range of two. Um, it could connect here and that'll create a mountain range of one, two, three. So this is where it wants to go. If there are multiple places where it can go, it's going to choose the lowest hex number. So if it can go at six and one, then it would go to one. But in this case, it's gonna go there like so. All right, so what happens if the four comes up again? Then you're going to check this fault again. You see the four, and it is this time sutured. Um, so it's actually going to split off. If it's unsutured, it's gonna crash. If it's sutured, it's gonna split off and stay on its own on its little island. Um, so if it's sutured, it connects, it disconnects. If it's unsutured, it connects. And if there are other, let's say that we had something like this. So if it was in this case and the four comes up, well, the four is unsutured, but it is connected to this craton by this mountain range. So both of these are going to go together and they're going to crash into uh, the largest possible mountain range it can. So it's going to crash into this one right here and it'll move together like so. Um, if the three pulls up, then this one is not um, connected to anything on the non-fault sides. So this is just going to move off like that. There is no directionality here. So if you need to disconnect, you just disconnect and you can put it anywhere you want. Um, if there's no... Uh, northwest, east, south, you're just m uh, connecting or disconnecting. That is the only thing that matters. So that is continental drift. Um, another uh, event that you have right here is the mutagen event, this little DNA strand. So what that means is that you're going to have to roll 
default two dice. Again, it, de it depends on what setting you're at, but the default is two dice. And let's roll two dice here. And the end result, the higher of the two, is going to determine the, your organ limit. All right, so I mentioned before that, let's say that we have derived organs here like so. And we'll put out the organs there that would be put in this situation. So um, when the mutagen event hit, we rolled two dice, and the higher of the two was an eight. So we need to check to see if we have more than eight organs. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're fine. Uh, but if we had this many, if we had nine organs, then we would have to remove organs until we were under the limit. So in this case, we could remove this one. And now we are under the limit again, and we're fine. But let's say that the highest roll was a four. Well, now we have a problem. Uh, we can remove these, we can remove these, but we cannot remove uh, basal organs. So if we have more basal organs than our organ limit, that means that this species is going to become extinct. It became too over-specialized, it had too much stuff on it, and it wasn't able to survive the mutagen event that occurred. In that case, the species goes extinct, all of its creepos go off the map, and uh, in the butterfly game, uh, it just becomes extinct and does not come back. You get a fossil for it, and that fossil is a point at the end of the game, but that is an extinct species that does not come back. All right, so those are mutagen events. Um, there's also uh, radiation. There's uh, metabolism and Darwinian radiation. So those symbols are, are uh, let me see, let me find one. Uh, I will take that out for later and So here, so you'll notice uh, this symbol right here that is, it has a yellow and a red. So that is a metabolism radiation event. What this means is that any derived organs that you have that are yellow or red need to be removed. So derived organs are not basal organs. They're the ones that get placed to the left of your species. So any yellow and red cards that you have need to go away. Any blue or green cards that you have need to go away if there is a Darwinian radiation. So you discard the cubes and you discard the cards along with them. There is also crowd disease. So let's see if we can find a crowd disease. Um, See, maybe it might be here. All right, so there we go. So crowd disease is the little red um, cylinders there. That shows you that, that is, the crowd disease is happening. So during crowd disease, uh, you check to see who has the most creeples of which species has the most creeples in any continent. So a continent is just anything, any large landmass that is free floating. So for example, we, we currently have three continents. This is one continent, that's another one, that's another one. So in this case, the species that has the most creeples are these archetypes here. And the species that has the most creeples here, well, they're all tied in this case. But you take the species that has the most creeples, in this case, these archetypes, and you have to remove half rounded down. So in this case, because you have two, you have to remove one of these. If you had three, you would still only remove one because that's half rounded down. So you're going to remove half rounded down of whatever species has the most creeples in any given continent. 
And then lastly, you have uh, angiosperm revolution uh, and ice age. So uh, you notice here the little yellow flower that is angiosperm revolution. So if that event comes up, you're going to put a flower in every swamp biome. So that's just every swamp biome gets a flower hex and there's an explosion of flower power now in the game. Ice Age is the exact opposite of that. You remove all the flowers from the swamp biomes. So that is Angiosperm Revolution and Ice Age. So the only uh, things that I haven't covered right now are the flush, which is this symbol right here. So that symbol right there is uh, just means that you flush the display. Um, so let's go right here and you clear the mutation display and you refresh. When you flush the display, you do not resolve any events. At the start of the game, you don't resolve any events. During a flush, you don't resolve any events. All right. Um, but let's say that uh, we did this and then we refresh the display and another event comes out, then you would uh, resolve that event. So that is that symbol means to uh, flush. And then you have this fossil symbol and that means do a scoring. So a scoring is going to be just like in the other games, you're gonna score your creeples. You're gonna count your creeples that are out on the map and your pheromones and then you're going to get fossils equal to how many people you have more points than. So if I have more points than two other players, I get two fossils. If I have the least amount of points, I get zero fossils. All right, and that is an intermediate scoring round. Um, when a fossil icon shows up, and you do a fossil scoring, you're gonna check for end game. So in the butterfly game, uh, it is not dependent on how many points you get. Um, it's dependent on a variety, not just that, it's dependent on a variety of factors. So you're gonna check to see if an end game trigger has happened. And the end game trigger is if someone has 12 creeples plus pheromones, or someone has a number of fossils equal or greater than the number of players in the game. That means that if it's a two player game and I have two fossils more than my opponent, that triggers the end game. If I have 12 points, meaning 12 pheromones plus creeples on the map, that also triggers the end game. The other thing that can trigger the end game is if you draw the last uh, card from either of the uh, mutation uh, uh, decks right here. So if I drew the last card here, that would also trigger the end game. At that point, you're going to do one more mutagen event. So you would roll however many dice you're playing with. Default is two. You do another mutagen event you uh, go through the motions of figuring out if uh, your species survive or if they don't. And then you skip the, the flushing and you tally up your final points. And your final points are gonna be all of your fossils, all of your pheromones, and all of your creeples on the map. Um, so that is the butterfly game. Uh, it adds events. Uh, which include continental drifts and uh, mutagen events, and it adds a little more complication into the way that contests work. You can do emergency dispersals and fly from one continent to another, um, and uh, scoring is a little more uh, uh, involved. Uh, one final thing I forgot to mention is the number of actions that you have between these games. So the actions in the, uh, you only have one action per turn in the cocoon and the caterpillar games. So in those games, you take an action, 
it goes to the next player. They take an action, it goes to the next player. And it keeps going until somebody scores uh, 16 or 12 points. In the butterfly game, you have an action per species. So every species that you create gets its own action. If you have five species out, you get five actions. If you have one species out, you get one action for every species. So in this case, this species is going to have an action and this species is going to get an action. So it benefits you to speciate to be able to do more things. Um, that is pretty much it. Um, I know that was a lot to take in, but now you know how to play all three versions of Bios Mesofana.